let's move on to item number 31. Find the distance between the line 3x minus y equals 0 and the point 2, negative 4. Did you go for square root of 7, square root of 10, square root of 14, or square root of 15? To do such, we have to remember we have, this is the given. And to get the distance between a point and a, a line and a point not on the line, we actually utilize the formula d equals the square root of the quantity, I mean the absolute value of the quantity, ax plus b, y plus c, all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So it's understood here that a is 3, b is negative 1, and your c here is 0. In this coordinates, 2 is x, y is negative 4. And upon substitution, it gives you d equals the absolute value of the quantity 3 times 2 times negative 1 minus 1 times negative 4 plus 0 all over 3 squared plus the square of negative 1. With such, the numerator simplifies to 6 plus 4 plus 0 all over the square root of 3 squared is 9, and this is 1. So the numerator is 10, and the absolute value of 10 is still 10, all over the square root of 10. Multiplying both numerator and denominator by square root of 10, so this becomes 10 times square root of 10 all over square root of 10 times square root of 10. It's 10. And 10 divided by 10 becomes 1. Hence, the distance between this line and point is square root of 10 units, letter B. 32. What is the area of an isosceles triangle with base of 2 meters and perimeter of 12 meters. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? For this one, um, it's understood that since your base is 10, I mean, your base here is 2 and the perimeter is 12, then 12 minus 2 is 10. But since uh, these two sides known as the legs, are equal. So 10 divided by 2 gives us 5 units each for this. And remember, if we draw your altitude, then this base will be divided into two equal parts. So this is one unit. This is also one unit. And um, this is a 90-degree angle. That's why this triangle is, in fact, a right triangle. The same thing here, and you could apply the Pythagorean theorem. With that, we have uh, for this one, that's 1 squared plus h squared equals 5 squared. So that's 1 plus h squared equals 25. Subtracting both sides by 1, you have h squared equals 24. And getting uh, only the positive or the principal square root both sides, you will get h as square root of 24. We did not include the negative square root of 24 because there's no such thing as a negative length of the height or negative value or length for uh, the altitude. And we could see that it's factorable to as 4 times 6. 4 is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is 2. And since 6 has no perfect square factor other than 1, so it should remain inside. Thus, the height of this triangle is 2 square root of 6, this one here. And we know that area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So your base here is 2. Your height here is 2 square root of 6. That's why A is equal to 1 half times 2 times 2 square root of 6. The 1 half and 2 
simplifies to 1. Hence, the area of this triangle is 2 square root of 6 meters squared, letter A. I hope you got it. 33. Perform the indicated operations and reduce results to simplest form. Take a look at 2x squared minus 3x minus 14 all over 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 multiplied by 2x squared minus x minus 10 all over 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Feel free to pause the video if you wish, but for now, we could actually factor them whenever possible and see if we have uh, factors that are the common to both numerator and denominator. The 2x squared minus 3x minus 14 is factorable as 2x minus 7 times x plus 2. The denominator here is 2x minus 5 times x plus 1 multiplied by the factorization of 2x squared minus x minus 10 as 2x minus 5 times x plus 2 all over 2x minus 7 times the quantity x plus 1. Now, you could see from here that 2x minus 7 will be canceled because they're, we have common, they're common. The same with 2x minus 5. And if that happens, what will be left is x plus 2 all over x plus 2. Multiplied by x plus 2 over x plus 1. And whenever I think we can no longer simplify this, I mean, there's no other common uh, factor except 1. So in multiplying them, we multiply numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator and using the FOIL method for the numerator and also for the denominator, you get x squared plus 4x plus 4 all over x squared plus 2x plus 1, and that is letter C. I hope you got it. Moving on to item number 34. A, B, and B, C are chords. If arc A, C is 110 degrees, what is angle ABC? Did you go for 35, 50, 55, or 110 degrees? So our AC is here. It's 110 degrees. And these two chords form an angle called an inscribed angle. And be reminded that the measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. We could see from here that arc AC is the intercepted arc of inscribed angle ABC. Thus, the measure of this angle is one half of 110 degrees or 55 degrees, letter C. Number 35. What can you say about sets A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and B with elements A, B, C, D, E? Are they, they are both equal and equivalent? They are equivalent but not equal. They are equal but not equivalent. Or they have different cardinality. From here, you could actually see that um, these are the two sets. Let us define them. When we say equal sets, they have the same elements and cardinality. Um, when we say elements, these are the objects inside your sets. And when we speak about equivalent sets, these are sets that have the same cardinality. So you could see from here that both A and B have five elements each. So each has a cardinality of five. Hence, since they have the same cardinality, then A and B are equivalent sets. However, 
the elements of sets A and B are not the same. Hence, they are not equal. Therefore, they are equivalent because the they have the same number of elements, but they are not equal because their elements are different. Letter B. I hope you got it. And if you did, great job. 36. 50 students are joining either the math or physics club or both. If 31 students are joining the math club, and how and 27 are 27 students are joining the physics club, how many students are joining both clubs? Did you go for seven, eight? 13 or 15? What do you think? For this problem, we have to be reminded that the cardinality of the union of two events, of two sets rather, um, is equal to the sum of the cardinalities of two sets subtracted by the cardinality of their intersection or commonality. Since we are subtracting, or I mean, we are after of the cardinality of the intersection because of the word end, union implies or, then we, this negative became positive on the left-hand side, and this became uh, minus here. That's why those who like math, 31, those who like physics, 27, but since there are only 50 in all, that's the union of the two sets. Therefore, you have 31 plus 27 minus 50. So that's 58 minus 50 or 8 students, letter B. So there are 8 of them who are taking or who like both math and physics or who are taking. 37. What is the cardinality of the set A with 45, 50, 55, and so on until 310? Did you go for 50, 51, 53, 54, and so on? From here, you could see that the numbers 45, 50, 55, until 310, it seems like they have a common difference. So this is an arithmetic sequence and the formula for the explicit form of an arithmetic sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times b where a sub n could serve as the last term a sub 1 as the first term n as the number of elements and b as our common difference our last term is 310 our first term is 45. You could see that if you have, uh, it's skipping by fives or subtracting the second by the first, that's 50 minus 45, that's five. 55 minus 50, that's five and so on. So we have this equation. 310 plus, I mean equals 45 plus n minus one times five. Subtracting both sides by 45, gives you 265 equals. I just rearranged this into 5 times n minus 1. Dividing both sides by 5, we get 53 equals n minus 1. Add 1 both sides to solve for n, you get 54 equals n. Hence, letter D is the correct answer. 38, the ratio of A to B is 1 is to 2, and the ratio of B to C is 3 is to 4. What is the ratio of A to C? Did you go for 1 to 4, 2 to 5, 3 to 8, or 3 to 7? You could actually see from here that uh, the first ratio could be expressed in, in its another form, which is one is to two means one half. The ratio of B to C, three to four, could be expressed as three fourths, right? And 
what is beautiful here is that we will multiply uh, since these two expressions are um, this one is an equality, this is also another equality. Then if we get the product of the left-hand side, that must be equal also to the product of the numbers in the right-hand side. That's why A over B times B over C is equal to one-half times three-fourths. In the left-hand side, the B will cancel, will become one rather. And here, you have one-half times three-fourths which is 3 eighths. So A over C is 3 eighths, or in ratio form, 3 is to 8, letter C. 39. The product of two numbers is 432, and their GCF is 6. What is their LCM? Did you go for 12, 32, 72, or 108. To solve this problem, remember this. If you have two natural numbers, then if you multiply their GCF and LCM, expect that it will be equal to the product of the two given numbers. So since we are given the GCF, which is 6, but with it, but the LCM is still unknown. So you have six times the LCM of A and B is equal to their product, which is 432. Dividing both sides by six gives the LCM of A and B as 72. Letter C. 40. A number has odd number of factors. This number must be a or n. Square number, triangular number, perfect number, or Fibonacci number. We have to remember, let's, let us actually know, I hope we could still recall or note, that perfect square numbers have, a, have odd number of positive factors. For example, if you have four, we know that 4 is expressed as 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. If a certain factor is duplicated, please make sure that you have to write it only once. So 4 has 3 factors. If you have 9, uh, 9 is 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. So 3 is duplicated, so just write it once. So you have 1, 3, and 9. And 9 has 3 factors. And if you have 16, it's factors, you could have 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. But 4 is duplicated, so just write 4 once. So 16 has 5 factors, namely 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. If you answered A, you got it correctly. 41. What is the order? of the element 2, 3 in Z3 cross Z4? Did you go for 5, 6, 12, or 13? Take note, this one is in abstract algebra. The 2 there is understood to be in Z3, and the 3 is understood to be in Z4. So the first element here is in Z3. The second is in Z4. Now, if you have 2, for example, if you have the element 2 in Z3, 2, you have to write 2 first. 2 plus 2 is 4, right? However, we are going to divide 4 by 3 because we are actually taking the modulo here. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 divided by 3 gives a remainder of 1, so it's 1. 1 plus 2 will give you 3. But 3 divided by 3 will give you 0. So once you reach the identity element which of addition, which is 0, so stop there. If you have, uh, so the order of 2 in Z3 is 3 because it was able to produce 3 elements in all, all in all. 
if you have three, three plus, so you have three, three plus three is six. Six divided by four gives a remainder of two. That's why I wrote here two. Two plus three is five. But five divided by four gives a remainder of one. So I wrote here one. One plus three gives four. But four divided by four gives a remainder of zero. So I reach zero here. So the order of the element three in Z4 is four because there are four elements here in all. And by a certain theorem, the order of 2, 3 in Z3 cross Z4 will be the LCM of the two orders, which are 3 and 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. If you answer C, you got it correctly. 42. Which of the following is a generator of Z6 under addition modulo 6? Did you go for one, two, three, or four? If you know, I hope you could still remember, when we say Z6, it is the set of all remainders when, uh, when, a, natural, when a certain integer is divided by six, right? So your remainders are zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, if you have one and you sing the same thing earlier, one plus one, two, two plus one, three, uh, one plus one, two, two plus one, three. You re remember, it's understood that I am dividing with C6. Three plus one, four, five plus one, uh, zero. How come zero? Five plus one is six, but since six divided by six, you will get a remainder of zero. So you stop there. If you have two, so you copy two first. Two plus two, four. Four plus two, six. Um, I mean zero because four plus two is six. Six divided by six is zero. Once you reach zero, you stop because you will keep on repeating the same thing over and over again. If you have the element three, Three first, three plus three, six, but six divided by six has a remainder of zero, so stop there. And if you have four, four, four plus four, eight, but eight divided by six gives a remainder of two. Two plus four is six, which uh, six divided by six gives a remainder of zero as well. And with that, you could see that Z6 could be generated by one, by the element one, when uh, it's being used uh, over and over again. Hence, one is a generator, and if you went for letter A, great job. In problems like this, if uh, in a similar problem, a certain element is a generator of Z sub N, if that element is relatively prime with the subscript. Or when I say relatively prime, the GCF of the subscript and of the element is 1. 43. The given multiplication table represents a cyclic group. Find the order of the group. Did you go for 2, 3, 1, or 4? You could actually see that there are four in each of the row or column, you could see four elements. A, B, C, or D in any order. Hence, the order is four, letter B. 46. I mean, 44. If sine theta equals 4 fifths and theta is between 0 and pi over 2, or it's in the first quadrant, then cosine 2 theta is equal to what? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? 
remember this. If you are familiar with your identities, you could actually see that cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And we know that sine theta is 4 fifths in the given. So by substitution, you will arrive to cosine 2 theta equals the 1 on the right-hand side. The square of 4 fifths is 16 over 25. Multiplying the negative 2 and 16 20 fifths gives you negative 32 over 25. And 1 minus 32 over 25 gives negative 7 over 25, letter C. 46. I mean 45. I hope you got this one, by the way. When a logarithm is expressed as an integer plus a decimal, the decimal part is called the A, mantissa, characteristic, base, or the anti-logarithm. What is your guess here? Remember this, so that you would be guided. Remember, it's CM, centimeter, something like that, where the C is the characteristic and M is the mantisa. And you could see here, there's a decimal point. So that tells us that the characteristic is in fact the whole number part and the mantisa is the non-negative decimal part. Letter A. I hope you got it. 46. The logarithm of the product of two numbers is equal to the logarithm, I mean to the blank of the logarithms of the factors. Did you go for sum, product, difference, or quotient? For this given, let me give to you some logarithm properties. If you have the logarithm of x, y base b, if you have that one, it's equal actually, actually to the logarithm of x base b plus the logarithm of y base b. In other words, the logarithm of the product of two numbers is equal to the sum of their individual logarithms. In fact, the correct answer here is letter A. Also, if you have the logarithm of the quotient, it's simply the logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the expression in the denominator. And they have the same base, by the way. And if you have the logarithm of x raised to n base b, then the exponent of n of x here will actually be uh, like a constant that will be multiplied here in, the, in this part. A is the correct answer. 47. The figure below shows negative, perfect positive, perfect negative, or positive correlation. You could actually see that the trend line there is rising to the right, from left to right. So it should be positive because negative is falling to the right. So we should choose either B, or D, boy or dog. However, you could actually see here that not all points are really lying on the line. Hence, this is a positive correlation, letter D. If it's perfect positive, then all of the points should lie perfectly within the line. But since they, some of them do not, then it's just a positive correlation, but not perfect. Letter D. 48. To express that there is a significant difference between the income of family A and that of the income of family B, which of the following should be used? Observe and take a look at letter A, B, C, or D. We're talking about significant difference. If there is a significant difference, then actually we should use the alternative hypothesis or HA and not HO 
or D, null hypothesis. So we should choose either C or D because we should report or we should express it in um, alternative hypothesis format. So is it C or D? Since there is a significant difference, then they should not be equal because they're different and not equal. Hence, D is in fact wrong. Therefore, we have to answer letter C. H A is that your X sub 1 is not equal to X sub 2. Null hypothesis states no difference or your H O. Alternative hypothesis states that there's a significant difference. It could be uh, another significant relationship. It could also be significant predictors, among others. If you answered C, great job. By the way, alternative hypothesis could also be HO, I mean HA or H1. Both are correct. Next number, 49. A subset of the sample space is, is it discrete variable, event, phenomenon, or continuous variable? What do you think? The correct answer here is, it's not discrete. When we say discrete variable, it is a variable whose value is obtained by counting. The correct answer here is in fact event. When we speak about phenomenon, it is an observable fact or event. And when we say continuous variable, it is a variable whose value is obtained by measuring. Letter B. I hope you got it. And let's have one more item, number 50. He was a 16th century mathematician who was the first to define that the probability of events to happen is the quotient of the number of the favorable outcomes and the number of all outcomes. Who was he? Is he Stephen Baldwin, Blaise Pascal, Girolamo Cardano? It should be Girolamo. It should be O there. Okay, Girolamo Cardano or Richard Dedekind. If you answered Stephen Baldwin, I'm sorry it's not, he is actually an American actor. Blaise Pascal is very famous for his Pascal's Triangle, which is actually very wonderful and has many very amazing teachers. The correct answer here is Girolamo Cardano. And Richard Dedekin has contributed to abstract algebra, algebraic number theory, etc. He is very famous for his Dedekin cut. Letter C. I hope you got these items correctly. And if you did, great job. And I wish you all the best for the licensure examination for teachers. And with that, TYBM, thank you very much. And a great day to one and all.